So I want to read a question relating to procrastination. And I'm reading this one because I had a few similar type of questions about this issue. In my book on procrastination, I talk about only committing to small pieces of work on a daily basis. And this question kind of, it's from somebody who, who tried this idea but ran into problems. So let me just read the question first of all, and then I'll explain the solution to this type of procrastination that this person's experiencing. So it says, I get your idea that small amounts of effort are key to overcome procrastination. Okay, and that's exactly true. So we wanna be consciously telling ourselves only making small commitments, not working, worrying about finishing projects, just the next step is all we focus on. However, when there's external pressure of expectation, I can't seem to overcome procrastination. I know these people expect me to put in a lot of work and that it will be, it must be of high quality. So should my approach be different when I'm under external pressure? Now, what I'm gonna to say to this is, there's a little bit more to the question, but let me just address that part first. Should my approach be different when I'm under all this external pressure, which will be a little bit different to like a personal project where you have much more control over and really the only person you're accountable to is yourself. Well, the short answer is not really. It's, there's no difference, okay? The approach is the same in terms of only committing to small amounts of work. And the other thing I talk about is having consequences for yourself when you don't show up to work when you say you will. But there's no difference in the approach, whether it's only yourself you're, you're holding yourself, that's uh, gonna hold you accountable, or it's other people that are gonna be expecting things of you. And the reason for this is, with something where you have all these external pressures and people have all these expectations of you. The truth is, okay, there's going to be, and especially if there's like a high quality of work you're expected to produce. Am I going to have to put in a lot of work in this? One part of us can, can rationally say, yes, probably the work, the quality of work I produce here will be higher if I put in more work. And that's rational. But you know, the same holds true also for a personal project you're working on. You know, like if you're working on setting up a side business or something for yourself or working on a passion project, isn't it also true there that the amount of work you put in will likely lead to a better outcome? Okay, so there's not really much difference in that. What I'm really saying here is, we're all aware that the amount of work I put in towards anything I'm working on, whether it be external accountability involved or not, the amount of work we put in is going to lead to a better outcome. You see, my whole approach with procrastination is I completely accept that. I'm not trying to deny that that's the case when I tell people to only commit to small amounts of work and try to be consistent with that and also to have these consequences and boundaries with your work. The, the difference here, and this is the whole thing about procrastination, is that that's rational. This idea that yes, more work equals probably a higher outcome or how, how, um, better pro end product. But with procrastination, what we're dealing with is an irrational, we could say, or a much more emotional or a part of us that needs a lot more compassion rather than just a cold, hard, logical, rational approach to something. It's the part of me that says, I don't want to do this even though rationally it would be a good idea if I did a lot of this. It's the part that says, I don't wanna do it, that we have to work with. So what we're doing with is, it's almost as if you can have two mindsets simultaneously here. One is kind of saying, of course, more work here would probably be a good thing. At the same time, there's another part of me that has no interest in doing it at all. And I have to start to talk to it in a way that's going to allow it to come out of its defensive posture and move forward towards that maybe more rational goal. Okay, so procrastination, it's, it's, there's the, the rational, the cold, hard, rational solution here 
isn't going to make any difference. It's all about how we talk to the part that's resistant, that doesn't want to step forward, that it maybe is a bit afraid or overwhelmed by this whole thing. That's what makes all the difference. And this is why we only talk to ourselves in terms of small steps at a time. Because this part over here wants us to do all extra, more, more, more. And this part is like, I don't want to do anything at all. So we're trying to convince this part to get on board and telling this part, this, the part that's afraid, that it has to do huge amounts of work is going to make it completely clam up and get defensive and uncooperative entirely. So there's a little bit extra here in this question. It says, you say to only commit the small amounts of work uh, at a time. However, I know this simply won't cut it. I'll have to put in massive amounts of work to stay on their good side, okay? So exactly what we're talking about there. We have an intention and openness to doing a lot of work, right? But at the same time as we're holding that intention, we have to talk to this afraid part in a way that's going to make it come forward and uh, come along with this in, this in this goal. It also says here, while I stopped making plans based on your advice, the planning didn't help me overcome procrastination anyway, I can't get the thoughts of work out of my mind. Okay, so I do talk about how planning is not very effective in terms of overcoming procrastination. The final thing it says here, it says, even when I'm not working, I'm thinking about, about it constantly and I'm, I'm, I'm not even doing any of the work. So please help. Now, this thing about planning, planning in terms of traditional, the, the traditional way that people plan is not helpful in terms of procrastination because what we typically do is we get out a piece of paper and we write down, I'm going to work from 9 a.m. to uh, 11 a.m. and then I'm going to work here and then I'm going to work here and I'm going to do a little bit more work here and then I'll finish off with work here maybe or something like that. But it's work, 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 work is, is where we see uh, the focus when we're planning in this fashion. Now, what we want to start doing is, I'm not against planning per se, because you'll notice, even though you're not making the plans, your mind, even if you're not writing it down, your mind in the background is still actively planning work, work, work. I have to do this much work. There's so much work to do. I have to work more. So it's already, it's, it's just doing it sort of um, without the piece of paper. It's just mentally planning. So what we do is we, we actively plan, but we schedule out where are the boundaries with work. What are the other emotional needs I need to meet? And I have those as our set intentions. Literally plan out time and space for those things so that those things outside of work do not feel threatened by our, our, the size of our goal that we have. Okay, So that's something that will really help with the cooperation here. So... With the, the main point with this one is this whole thing of, look, external accountability. You don't understand. I really have to do the work. I have to do so much work. And that's the reality of my situation. That's true also for personal projects. The more work we do, the better we get on with them, right? No one is in denial of that fact here. The question is, that's almost irrelevant entirely for procrastination. Procrastination is... How do I talk to the part of myself that is uncooperative? And one of the biggest things is to only take on small things at a time. Don't commit to finishing the project. Only commit to starting it and working on your next step. And then finally, to having very clear boundaries. Now, one final thing, a really useful thing I'll say about boundaries. Boundaries is being very strict about when I'm stepping away from my work or when am I doing other things that are not work related. One of the things that's really helpful with that is, let's say you do have this external accountability and you have, you know, you're thinking to yourself, I do really have a lot of work I need to do here. That's absolutely fine. So in, if that is the case, when you're planning some time away from work, you could even reduce that amount of time away from work, doing other things, meeting your other emotional needs. But the thing about it is you have to schedule something for those things that are non-work related. You have to do it deliberately and consciously, right? They can't be an afterthought that maybe you'll get to at some point. 
So whereas on a typical day where there's less external accountability, you might say, okay, I'm giving myself four hours of time tonight to do nothing, to do no work. Now, if it's the case you're under all this pressure, you might say, well, I'm only going to give myself an hour of time away from work here, potentially. Now, that's maybe not too sustainable over the long term. And I would hope that you will get back to your normal way of, of doing things where, where you're giving yourself much more time away from work. But in these high pressure scenarios like this, intense scenarios like this, it's okay to set aside and, and actively write down briefer periods of time away from work, maybe rest or relaxation time, but do it consciously and be very strict with implementing what you've committed to in terms of that. Right? It's not so much the time that you're giving your other emotional needs. It's do your other emotional needs trust you to stick with what you agreed to give them? Because this is the development of self-trust. And this is you having really strict boundaries. So you can still have super strict boundaries with work, even if you're taking on more work. But you have to be strict with the boundaries. So I don't know if that will make sense to many people who haven't watched any of my other stuff on this or maybe read my book on it. I hope so, but this is a question I get quite a lot of, and I want you to just kind of start to see that the whole idea of external accountability shouldn't really change your approach to personal productivity all that much, because nothing really changes. We always want to do uh, our best in terms of our productivity. It's just a matter of talking to the part of us that isn't on board with that. Quite often for good reasons, is not on board with that. Sometimes it can be about, you know, a uh, self-protective sort of thing about procrastination can be a way to avoid judgment. It can also be a way for us to say, well, look, we can rationalize after a disappointment. Let's say you do uh, hand in this work that you've, you've done and it's judged very harshly. If you can say to yourself in that situation, well, look, I didn't really do that much work on it. And in, in that case, it's not really a reflection of your ability. So therefore, your self-worth is not implicated in that. So procrastination can be a way for us to protect ourselves like that. But the main thing, um, again, is just stick to conscious boundaries and only focus on doing the next achievable small step and then see where you are and look to another subsequent small commitment because that's how the nervous system is cooperative and will be cooperative when you're working towards one of these goals, even if it's a big one. Guys, I'll leave it there for now. I hope that's useful information about overcoming procrastination, even in really stressful situations like this. And I'll see you again soon in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.